Today we're going to McClellan Airport to film CAL FIRE's aerial firefighters as they prepare for California's fire season. This is to capture footage for our long-term goal of making a docu-series that will take you inside the lives of airborne firefighters. Getting here has been over three years in the making, and this is the first time that we've had the opportunity to see how CAL FIRE's aerial firefighters train and prepare for the coming fire season. We're also testing two new cameras. Watch to the end to find out which one we send back. The C-Zone, black, no light. That might present a problem with Togo. We just got a new camera. We hate it. I have less than a week left to return it. We'll see if the weather holds. Can't see anything on that. I'll be honest, like right now I am not sold. That is so bad. Every year to prepare for the coming fire season. Cal Fire's aerial firefighters do recurrency flights and new crew members start their training up at McClellan Field. So today we're headed from San Diego to Sacramento to document their preparations for our docu-series. We got this Airstream to be close to the action during fire season, but it's had problems since we got it. And today was no exception. The sea zone is black, no light. It's either an electric box here, an electric box there, or it's a connection in the sea zone itself. Okay, well, Yahoo's working on the control panel. Let me quickly tell you about McClellan. McClellan opened in 1936 to support the war effort. It was a repair and maintenance facility for wartime aircraft, but after the Cold War ended, it was no longer needed. Then in 2005, CAL FIRE took over the facility as their headquarters for training and maintenance for their fleet of aircraft to fight wildfires across the state of California. The story of our life with this Airstream. Every time we go on a trip, there's some problem. We, we have lights, we have everything right only things we cannot control is the ac and cooling and heating that might present a problem with togo because we cannot monitor or change the temperature it feels like this airstream is falling apart and it's only a couple of months old This is day one of filming at McClellan. We are planning to follow a couple of the S2 pilots we met last year. My name is Steve Schweitzer. It's Keith Adler. I am currently a CAL FIRE tanker pilot flying the uh, Grumman S2T. And we're following two trainees. The goal is to follow them throughout the year as they go through their training and hopefully get their initial attack cards. It's an incredibly vulnerable and stressful time in their career because they only get one shot. If they don't make it, that's it. And the fact that they're letting us in on that is a huge, huge honor. We are leveling things up this year. We just got a new camera and we actually rented another camera to see if that'll work as the second camera. So Yaku is gonna be working with a Canon R5C and I'm gonna be working with a red Komodo X. It's still in the 30-day window of return policy, so if we hate it, I have less than a week left to return it. I'll be honest, like right now I am not sold. That is so bad. We'll see if the weather holds. It's a little, little gray. Okay, good morning. The time is 925. We'll get started with a little weather brief. Okay, the weather at McClellan is 180 at 6, 7 statue miles, overcast at 700, so we're parked for the time being. We'll give it till about 10 o'clock, 1030. Take a look at the weather, go from there. My name is Brad Baker. I am the lead instructor pilot for Amentum on the CAL FIRE contract. What are we up to now? 88 pilots, I believe. 70-something airplanes, mostly fixed-wing air tankers. And the way we train here at CAL FIRE is <clears throat> anybody who goes to a fire in an air tanker has to have an initial attack card. Initial attack card is basically a license to fight fire unsupervised. So they get to the fire, they can fight it tactically, set up the airspace, all those things unsupervised. It's not so much a flying job, it's more of a firefighting job. We're teaching accomplished pilots to become firemen. That's basically the initial attack card. And I would say there's probably less than 125 in the world. We have 42 initial attack cards here. Hey, I'm biased and I will say that yes, I would think that these are some of the most elite pilots in the world. Uh, currently we'll have 10 trainees. Our training is incredible. We have an instructor cadre. There's 11 of us now. Typically to get there, you have to have five seasons as an initial attack pilot and over 100 hours in specific airframe. We've all kind of got together over the years and made training really, really good. 
We use the simulators a lot recently for tactical training. We'll create a fire through the software in real time and go out and do all the procedures as far as the, the fire traffic area is concerned. And then they can develop the tactics necessary in their mind to, to fight that fire simulated. And how long does it typically take for them to get through that training process? Everybody learns it at a different pace, but generally it's about a season and a half. This is a perishable skill. And we see it on slower fire seasons that proficiency kind of deteriorates a little bit. So essentially every, every year in the springtime, we'll do recurrency training. So we'll go out and do a mixture of tactics, some airplane stuff, a lot of emergency procedures, things like that, just to get proficiency levels back up and ready for fire season. Okay, this is my last question. If somebody wanted to do this, what would you recommend that they do? I would recommend a solid aviation background. Fly as many airplanes as you can. Get, get a diverse skill set in aviation, tailwheel flying. Gliders is a big one. A lot of this job is energy management. A lot of aeronautical decision making experience is a good one. But essentially, understanding airplanes and how they work, and then fire and how fire works. And as long as you have the right attitude and a good understanding of airplanes and stick and rudder skills, if you will, that's, that's kind of what has been successful. I don't think we could have asked for anything better. I'm really enjoying the Canon. It's great. Easy, simple. I need to have a look at a couple of the settings on the screen because in the day, you can't see anything on that. But I think it shoots great. The, the stabilization is great. The autofocus, incredible. That's the opposite of mine. I'll be honest, like right now I am not sold on the red. I honestly think you would really enjoy the Canon. I'm excited to see what this looks like and then kind of see what the footage looks like next to each other, the colors and all of that. First, we had a look at the Canon R5C's footage. Yeah, this is 100% handheld. Oh, so that looks great. At 400. As good as the stabilization is, you still need to have a pretty steady hand. Oh, it's a triple shot too. Dang! Lovey, I think this is a pretty cool camera. Then we had a look at the red Komodo's footage. <sighs> that is so bad. Looks like it's snowing. I would have expected more. <laughs> that is so bad! Oh. Yeah, no, as nice as the red is, I just feel like you can trust Canon. I'm really sad to say it, but we have to return it, which gives me really mixed emotions because this has been my dream camera for a long time. And I really thought it was gonna be the perfect camera for this project. And I'm a little shocked that it's not. To be fair, we did buy a used camera and there's a pretty good likelihood that it was defective. Definitely not the camera we thought we'd be sending back. That's a wrap for our first shoot at McClellan. Excited to put this into episode one where we really dive into the training that all the pilots and air attack crews get uh, before the wildfire season starts. Now we're headed to Airstream in Fairfield who has been amazing at finding a new control panel for us so we don't have to worry about Togo being left alone in the trailer. They're just gonna install it and we should be able to be done today. This dealership's been amazing.